8.55 Eastern Time, and Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. The principal war casualty today was an accident. The German gunboat Este, which hit some German mines that had broken loose from their moorings and sank with the loss of 71 men. German planes twice attacked a convoy of British merchantmen off the east coast of England, but were driven off by the accompanying warships without loss to the British, according to the British story. From the Western Front, we hear of nothing but rain and mud. And there is some evidence that we may not hear a great deal more than that from the land forces this fall. The British War Minister Horbelisha said today that the Germans might be hoping that they could lure the Allies into a premature offensive. But, he added, we will pick our own time for an attack and will not waste our forces. Our correspondent Bill Henry, reporting from Paris tonight after a stay at the front, quoted British and French officers as saying the same thing. Mr. Horbelisha speculated on the possibility that the Germans themselves might begin a great land offensive before the weather gets too bad, but most of the talk we've heard about this great German offensive comes from London and Paris. The difficulties of such an attack on a strongly fortified line and the enormous losses it would entail are certainly as obvious to the German as to the French general staff. The British war minister spoke of a third course which the Germans might adopt, an endeavor to entice the Allies into the discussion of what he calls specious peace terms. Well, of course, in the last two or, three de- two or three weeks, there's been a good deal of talk coming out of Berlin, never official, never specific, about mediation by America or Italy or the Scandinavian states. But nobody else took it seriously. So yesterday, the Germans began to deny that they had ever put on a peace offensive at all. And tonight, the well-known newspaper, the Frankfurter Zeitung, says that it's England and France that have been playing up to Italy in the hope of Italian mediation, but in vain. Now, none of this seems to amount to much at present, but it might before long in certain conditions. <clears throat> Mr. Morrow reported from London tonight that an editorial in the Daily Telegraph says that if there is no heavy fighting this fall, England must look forward to a winter of boredom, blackouts, and bureaucrats, which would give Hitler his chance for another peace offensive. This would be a continuation of the war of nerves, with every nation waiting to see if the enemy would crack up first under the strain of waiting for something to happen. But all this is a maybe. The only actual diplomatic news today is the statement of the official Russian newspaper Izvestia that it would be impossible for Turkey and Russia to make an agreement which would be compatible with the treaty Turkey has just signed with England and France. Of course, the Turks specified in that treaty that they couldn't be asked to go to war with Russia. But the Izvestia article, if it was anything more than an attempt to reassure the Germans, may possibly forecast a cooling of the friendship that has long existed between Turkey and Russia. The German ambassador to Italy and the Italian foreign minister today signed an agreement for the resumption of the moving out of the German population from South Tyrol. If they bring them all back, there will be 200,000 more Germans to be planted in the provinces taken from Poland or in Bohemia, and that many more Poles and Czechs to be thrown out. A report from Vienna tonight said that 2,000 Austrian Jews had been sent off to a reservation in the central part of Poland. The part that wasn't mentioned the other day when Germany annexed the western provinces. The part that is presumably to be set up as a nominally independent Polish state. This residue Poland is also to be used as the dumping ground for Poles thrown out of Posen and the corridor to make room for the Baltic Germans. And of course these Poles, like the Austrian Jews, must leave practically all their property behind them. What they are to live on in their new homes has not been explained. Apparently the Germans are going to make the new Poland the poor house of all eastern Europe. The sinking of the Athenia was a tragedy, but some of the recent argument over the responsibility has come near making it a farce. And today the whole dispute was reduced to an absurdity by Senator Reynolds of North Carolina, who on the Senate floor blamed the sinking on a Russian submarine. Apparently the only nations now safe from being accused of the sinking are such states as Switzerland and Afghanistan, which have no seacoast and consequently no submarines. An attempt to limit Senate debate on the neutrality bill was headed off today, but there seems hope that after one more week of debate, the senators may, be get, may get around to voting. Our Washington correspondent, Mr. Warner, reported that one senator, Mr. Wiley of Wisconsin, has sat through it all and says that some of it was analytical, some distinguished, and some was bunk. The bunk has had a good deal of publicity, but it's worth remembering that a good deal of this talk has been a real contribution to public thinking, too. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.